Time to review the game that ruined CD Projekt Red's reputation. When it first came out, it was a broken piece of shit, and many advertised features weren't in the game. And probably still aren't here. But at least it isn't broken. At least it's significantly less broken. As for the game itself, outside the bugs and false advertising, I always thought it was good. A gripping story with great performances, great gameplay that varies depending on RPG factors, and good music. Yeah, it's not this god-level game that was advertised, but it's still a good game. A great game, even but still flawed. Premise. Corporations are pretty much in control of everything, governments probably mostly in the pockets of corpos, and crime is rampant, and very little justice in the world. So it's exactly like our world, but with cool tech that makes it fun. And less depressing, oddly. You play as cyberpunk Jesse Pinkman, starting as a dumbass, saying chum this, chum that, preem this, and gradually becoming more competent until finally you become unstoppable with your pocket revolver. Oh, and also he's dying because he installed malware in the form of Keanu Reeves into his head. Gameplay. Combat feels kinda off, almost not good early on, and I think that's a situation similar to Kingdom Come Deliverance, where it's simulating the inexperience of your character, plus your gear is not very good. But the higher level you get, the better the combat feels. It never feels outright bad, just kinda off but gets better with progression, and probably just me getting used to it. But with some guns, especially the Malorian pistol, I had a hard time lining up the sights how I wanted it. I couldn't see the enemy properly, but shooting the guns feels good, especially if you have a high tier gun, and you see the enemy stagger back and blow their heads off, the cover system is also great, like the way your guy peeks out when you crouch behind something, and he does that to the side too. But that's not the highlight of the combat here. No, that is the role-playing aspect of it. I would say you have four roles. Gun guy, melee man, stealth stranger, and netrunner ninny. Gun guy build will make time slow down when you aim and deal more headshot damage. Melee man, at least the skills I used, gave me the ability to move a lot faster, dashing here to there at lightning speed. Stealth stranger, the only skills I found and used for it made me move faster when crouching. And Netrunner Ninny is all about hacking everything and everyone to win. See a turret, hack it and make it kill your enemies. See a guy, hack him to deal damage over time to him. Or just make him unalive himself. These roles don't just work in combat. There are also skill checks for doors and conversations. And those are just the skills. A whole new world opens up when you look at cyberware, like being able to shoot missiles out of your hands, time slowing down when you're about to be detected, or the Sandevistan. It slows time down on command, and I had a build that focused on pistols, so I used it a lot. To line up headshots, and I also spacked into some sword stuff, so with slower time, I got shot less and could cut people into pieces more easily. It was far more useful to me than being able to hack, and I also had the high jump legs, and being able to jump on buildings or over fences, you can't really go back. 
there's a lot more cyberware, which means you have a lot more choice in how you deal with everything in the game. But I mean, you will still be shooting or meleeing no matter what. But you'll either do that better, or do some hacking or whatever for extra damage. Another thing that sucks in the beginning and gets better over time is cars. They have terrible handling. Near the beginning it feels like the wheels of all the cars are made out of butter. It takes so little for me to just slide and crash and mow down pedestrians. And that isn't just getting crashed into or bumped by something, it's just holding a direction a little too long and then I lose control. But then you get better cars, like the Calibern or the Outlaw. Excellent handling and excellent speed. But even they sometimes get hit with a case of butter wheels. And what I really hated about the cars is that the best ones were locked behind doing jobs for one specific fixer. And you can't filter jobs based on their fixer as far as I know. You really feel the upgrades of better cars, cyberware and weapons. It makes you stronger, and it also makes playing the game feel better. That makes you more confident saying, you will do this or I kill all of you in a conversation. There is a great deal of stuff to do in the game. Quests, gigs, and the main story. Gigs are just go to a place, steal something, rescue someone, or kill someone. Sometimes they want you to remain stealth, but I'm not a pussy, so I just shot everyone. Plus, there really is no benefit for the stealth path. It takes more time and is less fun. Side quests are a lot harder to put into a box. It can be a detective story full of intrigue and emotion, or you becoming a boxer, or something about car racing, or a monk boring you to death, or you drinking at a bar and then some scum come in and try to rob the place, and you kill them, and the bartender treats you like the piece of shit for killing them. They wouldn't have hesitated to kill that idiot bartender. I possibly saved his life, and he treats me like the bad guy. My only regret is that I didn't shoot him too. The quality of the side quests here are higher than main stories for other AAA games. Starfield wishes it was a quarter as interesting as a cyberpunk side quest. Phantom Liberty also adds car stealing. Steal a car and bring to place. Done. And it rewards you with a discount on cars and apartments. Which isn't really needed, but really nice. The gameplay is awesome. Fun combat with a lot of different playstyles, and just a lot to do in the game. And different ways to do them. Story. This is the best AAA story in a video game that's been released recently. At least I can't think of anything that comes close. The voice performances from every single character I talk to in my current playthrough of about 60 to 80 hours is stellar. Whoever the voice acting director is over at CD Projekt Red needs a raise because he or she is doing great work by getting good performances out of everyone. And it's also paired with great animation, natural facial expressions and body language. They actually move around in a scene, and it helps that all the environments you are in look really good and with rich detail. Even phone calls are performed well, with that little window in the corner where you can see the character. The only thing I dislike about the phone calls is that you can't skip them. You get a lot of phone calls, so there are some side mission calls that I'd like to just skip. And also phone calls can come at an inconvenient time, like in the middle of another quest. You can skip through normal dialogues, but only dialogues. 
So if a scene is dragging on while a character is doing something, you can't skip that. You have to just sit and watch them. I would really like to skip that. The writing. It's good. I have been thinking about why some writing is good and why some is bad. And playing this game and listening to the Game of Thrones books, I think it's the characters. I believe them as people. And they have character traits that I can like or dislike. And the conflict has good reasons to be happening. Like Rob Stark marries a Westerling instead of the Frey he promised to marry. And Tywin Lannister paid Walter Frey and Roose Bolton, therefore Red Wedding. And here, V and Jackie wanna be rich and famous, therefore heist that fucks up V. And kills Jackie. And now Johnny Silverhand is in V's head and he's dying, therefore more chaos. Because V wants to live. And then all the other characters have their own wants and desires that need to be worked through. But I will say that I don't really like the premise. I don't like playing a character that's dying. I would have much preferred just playing a guy that's trying to live his best life in Night City. And because V is dying, he kinda has to say yes to every possibility of a cure for his Silverhand AIDS. Plus, it's never really made sense to me. Like, Johnny's engram overriding V's brain, and that's killing him? I mean, sure, but if you can overwrite the brain once, you can totally do it again. And the game does not manage to convince me otherwise. And I also don't buy that the chip can't be removed. And that's the thing that annoys me in the story. Some things feel forced for the story. But we'll go over that more when I talk about the new ending. V is a yes man, so of course he is going to say yes to the very sketchy government people when they say they can cure him. And I say yes because I want to hang out with Idris, foot fetish Elba. And that guy dominates every scene he is in. The man performed his heart out. I think you're supposed to not trust him, but he's so charismatic that I love him unconditionally. Like Charles Stans as Tywin. As for the quests themselves, they never felt samey. It always felt like I was doing different things. Except for the gigs, they're mostly the same. But for main and side quests, Sure, I would be talking to people or getting into gunfights in most of them, but it always felt different. The reasons, the motivations and goals were different. And the areas you were in felt different. And it's entirely different scenes. Like going to a party undercover with Idris, or killing Raf and Shiv with Panam, or going on an underwater sightseeing tour with Judy. And the storylines of these characters flesh out the world of cyberpunk so much. Because you see these different perspectives people and their factions have on the world. And how they approach it. A great emphasis was put on making the world immersive. You can also see that in the amount of original music made for the game. Chippin' In is one of my favorite songs now. And that was made for this game. Story, good. Until you get to the endings, which I'm gonna have to spoil. So skip that if you don't want to be spoiled. I hate the new ending. The DLC has different endings for the DLC, but I'm talking about the new main story ending. In that ending, there is a cure. The government people cure V with surgery, but the problem is, V was in a coma for two years and he didn't let his friends know he was going into surgery. Because if he had done that, then this ending wouldn't have been the depression porn the writers wanted it to be. So V wakes up after two years and learns that he can't use cyberware anymore. Okay, fine. But then he calls his friends. Judy has moved on with her life and is married now. 
which is a happy ending for her. I like that. And she still wants to see him if he comes to wherever she lives. Panam doesn't pick up the phone and River Ward doesn't want to see V because River is a criminal now or something. It's something like, I don't want you to see me like this, V. Excuse me, dumb shit, but V is very much a criminal. He is a serial murderer, a thief, and probably several other things. Not to mention all the manslaughter. And the reason you don't want to meet up with him is because you don't want V to see you as a criminal? This guy is really stupid. But Victor Vector wants to meet you. Long story short, he works for a corporation now and confirms V can't use the cyberware anymore. Which isn't that big a deal in a world that has genetic engineering. So he could still be a super soldier even without the cyberware. But then a mercenary comes and bullies Vector and V to get treatment from Vector and get V out of the room. And on the way out, two very low tier thugs rob V and throw him down the stairs. Wow, that could have been resolved very easily if V had a pistol. Kinda like the one I used for most of the game. And V starts the game with little to no implants and he could take those guys then. He can totally take them now. But he just came out of a coma, so I'll let that slide for now. Then Misty comes and tells you that it will be okay for V to just be another face in the crowd. And there are many possibilities ahead. So far, it's okay. Bittersweet, except for Panam not picking up and River being a dumbass. Then we get into the phone calls in the credits. Rogue says he's welcome in the afterlife bar, but maybe he shouldn't come around, so he doesn't soil his legacy. Again, with genetic modification, V can become a super soldier, and he's still probably a mid-tier merc without the cyberware and gene editing. So he can still be a part of that world. Takemura is miserable and on the run. And the worst call of all is from Mitch. A member of Panam's nomad family, the Altecaldos. In short, he says Panam hates him now and that he shouldn't call. And that is such a cop out. Forced, stubborn assholery. Close to the end of the game, all the Altecaltos have said that V will always have a place with them. And Panam will be there for V. I guess the exception to that was V being in an involuntary coma for two years to save his life. I don't want to fucking hear it from Mitch. I want to hear it from Panam. Or hell, even Saul, who was the Altecalto leader. It's like the writers really wanted this ending to be miserable, but couldn't come up with a good reason for Panam not to want to talk to V. And no reason for the Altkeltos not to want to take V into the family. There is no reason. Their behavior in this ending is totally inconsistent with the way they were characterized in the game. I was angry after this ending. Because it doesn't make sense. None of it. V would still be strong without cyberware. You don't need a cyber arm to hold the pistol. And it makes the characters act like unreasonable assholes. Except for Vector and Misty. And I guess Reed because he offers V a job and is generally nice to V. So yeah, I hate this ending. I think it's terribly written and the writers were trying really hard to force a miserable ending. To save myself from hating the characters in the game now, I'm going to ignore this ending's existence and focus on the real true ending. Where we, Storms Arasaka alone, kills Adam Smasher and uploads Johnny Sack's girlfriend Ast Cunningham to the thing that will fix V's brain, and separate V and Silverhand into two separate engrams. 
Side note, the thing I hate in this ending is that Alt says that V's body will reject V's engram, which doesn't make sense, because if the body could be overwritten once, it can totally be overwritten again. But V goes back to his body, and then goes to the afterlife, and takes a job from a mysterious man who presumably has a lot of resources. And it's implied that the mysterious man may have the resources to save V's life, if V completes a job in space. And my headcanon is that V completes the heist, and his life gets saved, and then lives on with his friends. The end. Conclusion. Cyberpunk is an awesome game. Really fun gameplay with great writing. That would be excellent if they weren't limiting themselves with the idea that Cyberpunk has to be a depression fiesta. I had a lot of fun with the gameplay, even if it was a little clunky in places. Like the handling of cars being really sensitive and easy to crash and the shooting taking some getting used to. I recommend the game, and I give it a Mr. Hands out of Mr. Hands. Don't look that up. I'm currently going through midterms exams, and my brain has been all over the place. And I quickly gave up on trying to keep up with game releases now and I really just want to play some fun indie stuff. But I still want to review Star Wars The Old Republic, so subscribe for that and have a great day.